Jesus, wherever he will be me, I'm gonna follow Jesus all the way. was just barking nonstop, just continually. You guys know what continually means? That means without end. That's how God loves us, without end. That is awesome. And we'll learn more about that in a little bit. But first, I want to tell you guys about a dog named Pepper. Pepper, a black Labrador retriever, loved running free, especially while chasing rabbits. He lived in a wonderful home on the edge of the city limits. His owners loved him so much. He had lots of food and the whole world was his to explore, or at least the whole neighborhood. One day, however, his owners fenced him in the backyard. This frustrated Pepper. He loved his freedom, so he dug under the fence and crawled out. He was free! Then, oh no, his owners tricked him and put him back inside the fenced yard. No worries, he knew where the escape route was. He thought he could be free, but he soon discovered that someone had filled in the hole and staked down the fence. Why would they do that? A side note for humans only, according to the local news, the city council had passed an ordinance that all dogs had to be tagged and fenced in. Otherwise, they would be picked up by animal control. Of course, Pepper didn't know this since he couldn't read the news. Pepper dug out again and again and again. Finally, in desperation, his owners chained him in the yard. This made Pepper so angry. One day, when they weren't home, Pepper struggled and yanked until the chain broke. Free again! 
but not for long. Soon he found himself locked in a cage in the dog catcher's truck. He had thought the yard was small, but in this locked cage, he could barely turn around. The rest of the story is Pepper's secret. His owners knew he had been captured because they saw him in the dog catcher's truck. That evening, as the family was discussing paying Pepper's fines and bringing him home, the next morning, they heard a dog whining and scratching at the back door. Pepper had escaped. Oh, wow. He was muddy, beat up, and limping, but he was home. Pepper made his way back home, but he was pretty hurt, guys. Oh, poor dog, if only he had listened and obeyed and not been so desperate to get free. Do we think that Pepper's family still loved him even though they restricted his freedom? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Hmm. Do we think that his family loved him even though they tried to protect him against the ordinance that the city placed? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Yes, they knew that Pepper would not like to be captured and put into the, the animal shelter. They knew that he wanted to be free and with them so they could love him and take care of him and he could be with his family. But Pepper didn't realize that. If only he had obeyed, he would never be so hurt right now and have been captured. God loves us continually without end and he has things in place that protect us. But when we think, oh, we just got to, I don't know. I don't know why God wants us to do it this way. I don't know if we would just obey God. We would be protected from so many things that could hurt us and cause us to feel sad. So God's love for us is strong and it is continual. So let's love him back and obey him. Okay, guys? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Welcome everyone. We've already heard a story about Pepper the dog and today I'm going to tell you a Bible story. Now the thing you need to remember about Bible stories is they are not fairy tales. They are not once upon a time stories. These things really happen and so I'm going to need your help telling it. Can you guys help me today? Yeah. Yes? Okay. I need you to stand up. Everybody online, everybody in class, stand up please. Is everybody standing up? Okay, good job. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your finger and draw a pretend box around you, okay? Draw a box all the way around you. Good job. And you can't step out of the box, okay? Okay. All right, not your hands. Your hands can't go over the line, so you can't step up, back, forward, backwards, side to side. You cannot step, all right? All right, here's what we're going to learn today. We already heard about Pepper and how that Pepper was loved. What was that word? Continually. Continually, right? Pepper was continually loved by who? His owners. His owners, very good. Well, there is somebody who loves us continually. Who is that? Jesus. Jesus. Yes, he loves us continually. <gasps> Don't get out of your box. Do not get out of your box. I saw some of you starting to kind of waver. You have to stay in your box. Well, here's the thing. We know that the key, this is the key to success. Everybody give me a thumbs up. The key to success. Because everyone wants to succeed. Succeed means what? Somebody tell me. What does it mean to succeed? When? To it means to, what do you think? Like, um, finish something you want to do. Like finish something you want to do. And if you finish something you want to do, do you finish it well or do you fail? You finish it well. You finish it well, right. That's how you succeed. And when all the steps you take to succeed, are you honest in how you succeed? Yes. 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 Right. And so Israel, God's people, God wanted to see them to succeed. I see some people moving their hands out of their box. Whoop. Get your hands back down by your box. You got it? Okay. So God wanted to see his people succeed. And there were keys to their success. They needed to do what? They needed to put God First. second. First. Fourth. First. Fifth. First. Twelfth. First. One hundredth. First. 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 Right. They wanted to put God first. First, that's how you succeed. What that means is you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, I don't have time to talk to God today. You know, I'm going to go back. No, when you put God first, you wake up and you say, good morning, and you pray your day. 
So in other words, if it's school day, you pray about school, right? God, help me as I go to school today that I would look at good things, listen to good things, say good things. And in order to be successful, you need to get proper sleep. You need to get proper nutrition and eat. Otherwise, your brain is like asleep because it hasn't had any energy or food. That's not a way to be successful. And you have to do your very best, which means you have to open your school books and study. Right? Everybody, right. right. And if you want to be successful at something else, you need to practice and do your very best. Well, God laid everything out for his people to be successful. He gave them the keys to success. He said, put me first. I have got rules and I've got laws that are going to keep you safe. How is it staying in that square? Not too, not too fun, is it? Have you ever been grounded? Yeah. This being in the square is kind of like being grounded. When you're in grounded, you think of all the awesome things you would, oh, I can't, I'm grounded. I would really like to go, oh, I'm grounded. And you are restricted, right? But okay, everybody, erase your square. Erase it, erase it all the way around you. Okay, now move, everybody move. Doesn't that feel so much better to be free? Okay, good job. Well, if that's what God wanted his people to be is free and to be successful. And so he said to do that, you just follow the keys to success. Put me first, ask me into your day, and I will help you and I will keep the enemy away. Because put your square back. Boop, 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 boop. Come on, do it. The enemy wants to keep you like this, all stuck and restricted. But, and that's what makes him happy is when we can't be free. But erase it. Pshh. That's not what God wants. And so God's people, they would get up every day. They had the rules to success and they were obeying God's rules. But then one day, everybody say, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. They started thinking, uh, these keys to success. Uh, yeah. They decided that, you know, I don't want to pray today. I'd rather go outside first, and I'd rather do all these fun things. And they forgot to put God first. And where's the key to success? They don't have the key to success anymore. And guess what happened? There was a day that their enemy came. They were taken out of their, put your, put your square back. They were taken out of their town. They were taken to a place they didn't have ever lived before called Babylon. And they were there and they were restricted just like Pepper was when he was in the dog catcher's cage where he couldn't even move. And you know what they started thinking about? They started thinking about, do you remember when we were back home and we had Erasure Square? We had freedom and we could serve God and we were just the successful people of God. We talked to him. He came into our day. He helped us. He kept the enemies away. They started remembering all those things they had forgotten. And you know what God did? God looked down at them and he loved them. How? Continually. And he wanted them to have a good life. And so <clears throat> when I put this hat on, I am Malachi. So God sent Malachi and Malachi was a prophet of God. And he told Malachi, you go down and you talk to my people and you give them a very special message. I want you to give them a message about my continual love and how I want them to be free and successful. So Malachi, he went he had the word from God. He went down and he told all of God's people God loves you continually. Do you know that he let them know that God is mighty and he's in the midst of you and he wants to save you and he wants to rejoice over you with joy and you're going to rest in his love and he will joy over you with what? Do you remember our scripture verse? Oh, singing, right. And Malachi's job was to remind them do you ever get reminded by your mom? Yes. Do you ever get reminded by your teacher? <gasps> Remember to be good. Good to do. And then she homework. tells you what. Yes, your homework. Right. That's the key to success. Well, that's what Malachi's job was. Do you always like to be reminded? Be honest. 
No. No, you, because you think, how could I forget that, right? And so whenever that Malachi went down to remind God's people what they needed to do, they wanted to be reminded because they were tired of being in that restrictive box like being grounded. And so they began to put God first and guess what they got to do? They got to go back home to Jerusalem. They were able to go back and live in their homes. It was a wonderful time. Can't you imagine how they felt when they realized erase their square and they were free and they were successful to do what God wanted them to do? And it's the same with us. You know, you don't have Malachi coming to remind you about God's continual love, but you have your Sunday school teachers. You have your pastor. And what he reminds you is, is that you are God's children and he loves you so much. He loves you. Everybody say continually. continually. Yes, God loves us continually. And when you know that, then you can take that message just like Malachi took it and you can shine your light to all of those people that you see every day and remind them God's laws in the word of God aren't to be restrictive. They are for protection. Wasn't that about Pepper? Was the fenced in yard to be unkind to Pepper? No. No. It was for his what? Protection. Right? Because it was not fun being in that dog catcher's little cage and looking at his house as they drove away. And we have an enemy today that doesn't want us to be friends with God, doesn't want us to be successful, but we know that we can remember to be successful, put God what? First. First. And when you do that and you love him and you make right choices, then you can shine your light to others. So let's stand up today and we're going to pray. All right? Because we're just sometimes like those people where we just forget but I don't want to forget the key to success. Do you? I don't want to forget it. So let's bow our heads and let's pray. Jesus, we come to you today and you have brought the word of God today to every one of these students, to every boy, every girl, every grandma, grandpa, mom, and dad, because the word of hope and the word of love is the same to all of us. We are all your children. Would you just help us that we will not forget that your rules, your laws, your commandments are there for a protection that we would be able to put you first, make right choices, and be successful and share your love with those who have never heard it before. Those that don't know that you're a loving God, that if we sin that we can just simply say we're sorry and that's called repentance. And our sins can be forgiven. You said you don't even remember them, that they're cast off in forgetfulness. And Jesus, that you died on the cross that we might be baptized in your name. And all of those sins washed away. And then your desire is to come close and to live right in our hearts when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And we get that Holy Ghost when we just begin to worship you and thank you. And all of a sudden our English language begins to be a language we never have learned. And that's that special heavenly language in Acts 2.38. And that is your plan for us then to go share the love and the light with others. And I ask that you would do that in us, that we would never forget your love. You are holy, you're so worthy, God you've won my heart, you're our creator, a loving father, you know me from the start, you are holy, you're so worthy, God you've won my heart, you're our creator, a loving father, God you've won my
I have a question for you all. Is God's love like a baseball or a balloon? Hmm, what do you guys think? I think it's like a balloon. A balloon? What do you think? Like a balloon. Like a balloon? Well, good guesses. What happens if you puncture this balloon? It'll pop. It'll pop. What happens if you took this balloon and you sat on it? It'll pop. It'll pop. What happens if you don't do anything to this balloon and you put it up on your wall to leave it up there for something and you don't come back for a week? It'll shrivel up. It'll shrivel up. What about this ball? What happens if you puncture this ball? This ball? Nothing. Nothing. What happens if you throw this ball? It's gonna, it'll, it'll hurt somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? It's going to break something. Yeah? Is it going to break? No. No, it'll no. bounce. What do you think will happen if I put this balloon on the table and left and didn't come back for a whole week? It's not going to change. It's not going to change. It's not going to change. It's still going to be a ball. Yeah. So do you think God's love is like a balloon or a baseball? Baseball. baseball. A baseball. A baseball. <laughs> this is a very strong ball. It takes repeated hits and it's still going to have the same shape. You puncture it and you might hurt your finger before you hurt this ball. God's love is strong just like that. We may not even believe every day that he loves us, but it's still there. We doubt him. His love's still there. We turn away from him and we make mistakes. His love is still there. It's still strong. He never stops loving us. So answer this question in your own heads, okay? Is your love for God like a baseball or is it like a balloon? Mm. I'll see you guys later. We've learned a lot today about God's continual love. And the one way that we put God first is... We have our vision board. So if you haven't made your vision board yet, you need to make it. Because putting God first in praying, reading our Bible, and remember, showing God's love to our friends. And what's this one? Do you remember what this is? No one before God. No one before God, right. And singing and worshiping. Do you know that the Bible says that he first loved us? So we love him. And when we put God first and realize that his laws are there for our protection and we put him and all these things before us, you're going to be successful. So go this week, be successful. Know that the love of God is there for you and he doesn't go on vacation. It doesn't matter where you are. You can call his name and he's there for you. All right. Have a great week. I'm gonna follow Jesus wherever he will lead me. I'm gonna follow Jesus all the way. I'm gonna follow Jesus wherever he will lead me. I'm gonna follow Jesus all the way. He is the light that breaks through the darkness. Follow his lead and light.